WCIA Channel 3, the television news leader in central Illinois. Tonight, live from the news center, this is the Channel 3 News at 10. Good evening. Central Illinois was Tornado Alley this afternoon. Dozens of funnel clouds were reported. At least half a dozen touched down, damaging dozens of homes and causing several injuries in Shelby, Edgar, and Jasper counties. This was the tornado that struck Findlay in Shelby County in the late afternoon. Beverly Stroud of Decatur was at a campground three miles south of Findlay when she captured these scenes of the storm with her camcorder. And Channel 3's Michelle Kelly is standing by now live in Findlay with more on the storm story there. Michelle? Well, Dick, it started around 4.45 this afternoon. A tornado blasted through Findlay, injuring two people, destroying 11 homes, and damaging many more. It started in the west end of town and ripped through parts of Findlay. Power lines were torn down, roofs were taken off, and debris went up in the air. Officials were forced to shut off electricity and gas. Emergency crews will be working throughout the night to aid victims. The town's northwest side, which is where the damage is, has been closed off. Central Illinois Power Service says it has called in extra crews to help with downed power lines. Earlier tonight, I spoke with several residents who are now trying to pick up the pieces of what is left of their homes and possessions following this afternoon's devastating storm. So what do you plan on doing now? <laughs> I have no idea. I just try to salvage what we can and see what happens. I have no idea. I've never been through this before or anything like it. My husband, he came in there and said, come here, friend, come here, quick, get out here, get out here. And it was a horrible sound. And I came out and he said, look at this. And it was going like straight through here. And it was just blowing up stuff right with it. I've never seen anything like it. Next. We went into the R&K and the power went out and the food, you know, started coming off the walls and I, I got thrown to the floor and then we seen my mom drive by and she was just screaming hysterically and my dad, he was in there looking for me, you know, because he didn't know we left because he, he thought that we were still here, you know, and it's just terrible. Joining me now is Mayor Robert Cox of Finley. We've been told that officials are telling people to stay out of Finley unless they want to help with the cleanup. How can people help if they want to help people with the cleanup? Well, right now everything's being done that can be done. And the biggest help we can have right now is if they would just, you know, stay out of the way right now because the north end of town has been shut off except for the cleanup crews. So just about everything that can be done right now is being done. And if people want to help out tomorrow, where can they go? Okay, the, right now the command post is in the uh, Finley Fire Department, which is right south of the Finley Bank, and uh, everything's being coordinated through there right now. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Dick. Michelle, this is Dave. Can you ask the mayor, uh, if he's still around there, if there was any advance warning of this tornado? Did people know it was coming, or did it kind of surprise him? Did people know that the tornado was coming, or was it a surprise? I think it was a big surprise, but there was a lot of people that saw it coming, and actually saw the thing you know hit town and everything so for some it was a big surprise and others it wasn't i've talked to several people around town that were actually in their homes when it hit and uh, we're just really thankful here that no more personal injury happened than what did there's a lot of uh, personal property that's been damaged homes probably something like 40 homes have been torn up and we're just really thankful that the, our people haven't been hurt that's all i can say right now it's, it's been a big mess okay thank you mr cox back to you Okay, hey, thank you very much, Michelle. Michelle Kelly reporting live from Findlay. Dave? In other news today, other twisters touched down elsewhere in the Channel 3 viewing area. Several homes were damaged or destroyed by a tornado that slashed across parts of Edgar County this afternoon. These scenes were shot this afternoon near Horace. Elsewhere, there are reports of damage and injuries at Newton and Jasper County. Other touchdowns were reported near Arcola and in Coles County. In all, about a dozen twisters touched down in central Illinois today. In Edgar County, Channel 3 News talked with an eyewitness uh, who saw the storm personally that moved through that area uh, in Edgar County. You know, I saw it touch down. I live down north of, uh, uh, north of Paris. And it, uh, my brother and I saw it coming, coming behind our corn crib. We could see it kind of come up this way. And then it came right up the horse uh, back top road. It looks like it got over there. Dennis Kelfhammer's got his machine shed, and it looked like it then kind of angled and come right up the next road. 
And coming next on the Channel 3 News at 10, John Gallus with our exclusive weather check. He'll tell us if all the storms are over. And the report on the summit and the other news of the day. Newton resident and Channel 3 weather watcher Ryan Schmidt says he watched homes blow away when a tornado touched down in Jasper County today. His home was totally destroyed. He estimates about 30 others were wrecked. Tornado there hit around 6 o'clock. One man underwent surgery in Effingham because of injuries he sustained in Newton. Five to six other people were reportedly injured and taken to Richland Memorial Hospital, treated and released. So a busy day, but the severe stuff is out of our area at least. Yes, and I'll tell you what, as many as we had today, Indiana had uh, at least two dozen reports, and that's being mm. conservative. But now, uh, all we're contending with now is wind, Dick, and there is a lot of it. Winds are westerly at this hour, gusting to over 40 miles an hour, and if you're out in the country... ...will provide funds for the cleanup, including money for overtime for state workers. Counties covered by the declaration include Clay, Crawford, Edgar, Edwards, Jasper, Lawrence, Richland, Shelby, Wabash, and Wayne. Thousands of people in those areas are without power today, and one person died when tornadoes swept across the state. Our follow-up coverage to yesterday's storms begins with Channel 3 Cheryl Pettis in Findlay. Signs of the twister were everywhere. A 70-year-old maple tree lay uprooted on a front lawn. Another stretched across the roof of a house. This contorted piece of metal was once a car before it was flipped end over end. Joe Hibbert with a home video camera in his boat taped the tornado as it ripped into the village of Findlay. And Barbara Watkins watched it. I saw the house, the roof of the house go. And so I backed up and got the front door closed and I looked out and the, the front tree went up in the air and come down and I, I backed up into a doorway between the kitchen and the living room and then glass, the windows all blew in and the glass just flew everywhere. Primarily there's a, 11 residences that were destroyed. There were 25 with damage, 15 of those were major damage. According to the Red Cross and the local damage estimate, uh, we're up about a million five in loss so far. Most of the destruction was in the northern part of the village. This morning, I think the first thing I noticed was the loss of our trees. You know, 40, 50, 60-year-old trees, and they're just gone. And uh, it, it just take a long time to replace that kind of thing. Friends, families, and neighbors have all come together here in Findlay to help and comfort each other in this time of crisis. And for Dale Chapman, who's lived here 17 years, it's virtually a different story. He's lost almost everything. The family history lay in ruins. Wow. Never felt anything like it in my life. There were only two minor injuries, and most who can go back to their homes should be there tonight. Wind. Cheryl Pettis, Channel 3 News, Findlay. Residents of Newton and Jasper County began rebuilding their homes and lives today. The small town was hit by a twister last night around six, injuring seven people. Thirty homes were destroyed and another 70 damaged. The tornado ripped through town, leaving an unofficial estimate of $3 million damage. Cleanup began early today and will continue for several days. Getting people from out of town coming in to help out. And I think everybody's working together, they're pitching, pitching in. And if um, in the next couple of days, everybody keeps working the way they're going now, everything should hopefully get back to, if you can call it normal. While much was lost, many just feel grateful to be alive. The pressure in the house, we couldn't hardly stand the pressure. It just pressed against us till we, we couldn't hardly get our breath. And we couldn't hear, and it just seemed like our head was just going to explode. First you could hear all this, feel all the pressure in your ears, and then the loud noise, and then you could just hear things are going, flying. You could hear the house coming apart. So I just kept saying to myself, it only lasts a few minutes. And everybody says it only lasts a couple of three minutes. So if we can just, this bathroom will just hold together about three more minutes, we've got it made. And it did. Most of those left homeless are staying with relatives and friends, other at the, others at the town's high school. Officials say only a few areas are without power and phone service, but that should be restored within a day or two. Cleanup is also underway in Edgar County today. Officials say a cyclone blew through an area near Paris, taking the roofs off of some homes and doing other damage. Larry Daly's home was one of those in the path of the twister. Today, about 75 friends and neighbors showed up to help pick up debris. The Dailies were on their way back from Terre Haute, Indiana, when their home was damaged. 
basically it took uh, all our grain bins and uh, two machine sheds and uh, about a third of the house. Uh, right now we're just trying to pick up all the debris and, and get everything piled up and um, try to get everything out of the, the farmer's fields that are, that are around us and, you know, just clean it up. Daly doesn't have a damage estimate yet. He does think he should be able to stay in his home this evening as long as power is restored. Eight people are confirmed dead and about 150 others injured after twisters ripped through parts of central and southern Indiana. One of the hardest hit areas during yesterday's storms was Petersburg, Indiana. Indiana Governor Evan Bayh toured the community today and likened the damage to that done by a bombing run. In Petersburg alone, 150 houses and 18 businesses have been totaled. Six of the state's eight fatalities came from that town. The other Indiana community to suffer extensive damage is Bedford. A tornado touched down atop a restaurant in Bedford, then continued on a path of destruction through town. One person was killed in Bedford, 44 injured. Still to come, high winds kick up dust, causing a major traffic accident along Interstate 57 near Mattoon. High winds throughout central Illinois today have created dozens of dust storms, resulting in hazardous driving conditions and numerous accidents. State police from the Pesodum Post are working with Coles County emergency personnel on several accidents resulting from poor visibility on Interstate 57. State police say they're handling two seven-car accidents on the northbound lanes near Charleston and Mattoon, and at least four two-car accidents on the southbound lanes. The extent of injuries related to those accidents is unknown at this time. Interstate 57 from Arcola to Mattoon was closed because of numerous accidents and may remain closed at this time. In addition, police say there have been several minor accidents in which motorists have been able to move their cars and file their reports from the state police post. Strong winds this afternoon left motorists along a patch of Interstate 74 near Urbana with zero visibility. The result was three minor accidents. Channel 3 news watcher Fran Olson happened across the scene and shot this tape. State police report no serious injuries and say a light rain shortly after the dust storm appeared to have wetted the ground enough to clear things up. Blowing dust has created poor visibility on interstates 55 and 72, as well as a number of secondary roads. Police are urging extreme caution in rural areas this afternoon and evening. A Decatur woman has died from injuries she received when the car she was driving crashed into the back end of another car near Mount Zion. 26-year-old Roberta Bates died last night at St. Mary's Hospital in Decatur. Macon County Sheriff's deputies say Bates... Come and eat, Damon. That's up very close to Decatur. The tornado came out of the west, what flattening homes, buildings, and everything in its yeah. path. Jim Whelan of Christman captured it on a home video camera. Edgar County Sheriff's say funnel clouds were spotted around 5.30. Within minutes, the tornado touched down south of Christman. Some residents who saw it say they still okay. can't believe the tornado claimed no lives. Well, look at that one, Bigfoot. Yep, yep. It, it's terrifying, I don't think. There's never, ever been one through this area that I know of. And I've never seen a funnel cloud before. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's terrifying. <laughs> I don't want to go through it again. In the aftermath, some residents are literally rebuilding from scratch. The tornado destroyed almost the property damage. Edgar County officials report at least four homes leveled. And those whose homes were spared are lending a hand to their neighbors where they can. I guess we was considered pretty fortunate because it went in, went in right between our farms and uh, we're going to try to pick up some stuff. And as far as insurance adjusters, I believe they're coming in the morning and uh, find more about it then. State officials have declared the county a disaster area, along with nine others, including Edwards County, where a tornado there killed one woman. Edgar County officials don't know yet how much state financial help they'll need to undo some of the damage. It hit hard in certain areas, and then it, it raised back up. We had uh, several sightings, several that were confirmed. Some places we didn't have any damage, and other places we had quite extensive damage. For some residents, there are losses they say can't be measured in stone or bricks. My father-in-law had a, uh, a paint horse that he rode and all the grandchildren rode, and, and its leg was just mangled. It looked like maybe the, the tornado might have picked it up and thrown it down. So we had to shoot it last. While the rebuilding has already begun for the residents here, those who actually saw the tornado coming and those whose homes stood in its way said something they never want to have to go through again. Sharon Holland, Channel 15 News, Edgar County.
In Indiana, it's even worse. Some parts of the state looks like a bombing run hit them. That from Governor Evan Bayh. This is Bedford, Indiana, just one of the spots where tornadoes rip through. Fifteen twisters hit the state last night and caused damage in 14 counties. People say they feel lucky to have survived. Me and the wife flipped the couch over and jumped under it. Well, it sounded like a freight train to me, is what it sounded like. And it only lasted for just a few seconds. It's heartbreaking. You know, um, my dad took a lot of pride and joy in his home. But <laughs> thank God they're all alive. Eight people were killed. Governor Bai has declared parts of that state disaster areas as well. Traveling through a dust storm can be a horrifying experience. And many people on I-57 found that out firsthand today. State police say at least 23 cars were involved in accidents between Arcola and Mattoon, all within a half hour period. Around 3.30, state police and emergency services and disaster personnel blocked off I-57 between the two towns. The first report we got was that the uh, Mattoon ambulance crew thought they were in a tornado. It was so bad up there. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I was dispatched up there. And uh, we determined that it was just dust blowing, uh, winds uh, possibly up to 50 miles per hour, and visibility was zero at times. Roadblocks were removed before 7 o'clock tonight. Police say all of the injuries were minor. IGs have been declared state disaster areas after being ravaged by tornadoes. Governor Thompson today made that announcement late this afternoon. Four of the ten are in the Channel 3 viewing area. They include Crawford, Edgar, Jasper, and Shelby counties. The governor says this action will provide the necessary money for people in those counties to begin rebuilding their homes and their lives. This is the twister that struck Findlay yesterday. Remarkably, no one in Findlay was killed, and statewide only one fatality was reported. There has been no official damage estimate, but it will likely run into the millions of dollars. Channel 3 Cheryl Pettis reports on the twister that struck the Shelby County community of Findlay. Signs of the twister were everywhere. A 70-year-old maple tree lay uprooted on a front lawn. Another stretched across the roof of a house. This contorted piece of metal was once a car before it was flipped end over end. Joe Hibbert, with a home video camera in his boat, taped the tornado as it ripped into the village of Findlay. And Barbara Watkins watched it. I saw the house, the roof of the house go, and so I backed up and got the front door closed, and I looked out and the, the front tree went up in the air and come down, and I, I backed up into a doorway between the kitchen and the living room, and then glass, the windows all blew in, and the glass just flew everywhere. Primarily, there's a, 11 residences that were destroyed. There were 25 with damage, 15 of those were major damage. According to the Red Cross and the local damage estimate, uh, we're up about a million five in loss so far. Most of the destruction was in the northern part of the village. This morning, I think the first thing I noticed was the uh, loss of our trees. You know, 40, 50, 60 year old trees, and they're just gone. And uh, it just take a long time to replace that kind of thing. Friends, families, and neighbors have all come together here in Findlay to help and comfort each other in this time of crisis. And for Dale Chapman, who's lived here 17 years, it's virtually a different story. He's lost almost everything. The family history lay in ruins. Wow. Never felt anything like it in my life. There were only two minor injuries, and most who can return to their homes should have power and gas tonight. In Findlay, I'm Cheryl Pettis, the Channel 3 News at 10. It was a day of picking through the ruins in the small town of Newton. The tornado that ripped through the Jasper County town last night injured seven people and demolished 30 houses. 70 other homes were severely damaged. Friends, relatives, and neighbors came together today to help start the long process of putting things back in order. An unofficial estimate from the state police puts damage close to $3 million, but the damage was the last thing on people's minds last night. I was at the kitchen sink in the kitchen, and I saw this huge, uh, it just looked like a tunnel, a big black tunnel, and it was full of everything. It was full of debris and tin and chairs you know we looked around and saw all this other and it's just thankful you're alive and everybody says it only lasts a couple of three minutes so if we can just this bathroom will just hold together about three more minutes we've got it made and it did
The crews were busy today removing trees and restoring power. Officials say a few areas are still without electricity, but they hope to have service restored within two days. Indiana's National Guard is patrolling southern sections of that state tonight as a result of yesterday's storms. Indiana Governor Evan Bayh has declared a state of emergency, hoping to prevent looting and provide medical assistance. All told, 44 tornadoes ripped through the Hoosier State, killing nine people and injuring hundreds of others. And today, in West Lafayette, high winds brought down a tree, crushing an eight-year-old child to death. High winds kicked up several dust storms in central Illinois today. The storms made driving conditions hazardous and resulted in numerous accidents. State police report seven collisions today on Interstate 57. Two separate accidents involving 12 vehicles created the largest wreck in the northbound lanes of I-57 near Mattoon. A passenger in one of the cars says her car hit another vehicle that had stopped in the middle of the highway. Just a few seconds later, another car came crashing into us and the car that was next to us was right up against us and we didn't, we didn't even see this coming. All of the injuries were minor. Interstate 74 near Urbana was also hit by strong winds today that at times left motorists with zero visibility. There were three minor accidents there. State police say no serious